Hello, I don't know if anybody can see me or hear me, so I'll just keep on talking. Um, I'm Shannon Hayes, and um, there we go. Hi, Chelsea, I'm going to bring you on in a second. I'm Shannon Hayes, and I am co-founder of the Bloom Foundation for Maternal Wellness, and also the MWHN Network, which is what you're on now. I'm going to try to get myself a little comfortable. And I'm really excited because tonight for Maternal Mental Health Week, if you haven't been following us, we've had amazing experts, women, um, doing all sorts of things this week. And tonight, I get to talk to Chelsea Skaggs. And Chelsea Skaggs is Chelsea's keeping it real. She is a blogger, a speaker, a coach, a trainer. And tonight, we're going to talk a little bit maybe a lot of bit about sex. So um, I see her waiting for me. Hi, Lisa and everybody else. And I'm going to bring her in right now. Okay. Chelsea. She should be here in just a second. Hi, Chelsea. Hello. First of all, it's nice to meet you. Uh, Chelsea and I haven't met before. I kind of stay in the shadows of, of, of these things, um, but I was very excited to talk to you today, and I have been stalking you online, and you are just delightfully entertaining. I Good. love it. I love it. Let me ask you first, before we get started, where are you? To what state? Ohio. Ohio. Okay. I always Midwest. Like to, I'm in Washington State. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. You're I'm not in you. Jersey. I know I started out in Jersey and um, I am here and I'm never going back. It's wonderfully beautiful <laughs> out here and yeah. um, it's a good place. So, and are you originally from Ohio? Yeah. Little Chelsea's from Ohio. Okay. Yep. Good. You know, would never stay here. Wanted to get out forever. Did for three years and it's here home. we are again. Here he is. <laughs> okay. So you are, I, I, again, as I said, I was, stalking you a bit and you are um so interesting i love your website your instagram page uh, let me start by saying chelsea is postpartum together is i guess the business name but your instagram page chelsea keeps it real is just fantastic thank and, you and i thank you for joining us um here on instagram live and as we uh, said we're going to talk about sex, but we, before we get into that, I'm sure that's not the only thing you do. Uh. <laughs> that <is> so interesting. <laughs> um, why don't you tell me about postpartum together and yeah. tell everybody else? Well, thank you, Shannon. I think like a number of us, I felt this void in this gap after I had my first baby. I was like, okay, I took the birthing classes. I had all the pregnancy education, and yet here I was with a new baby, and I knew how to take care of the baby, but I felt so alone and changed and isolated in a lot of ways as a new mom. And, you know, through that, I found that there were these gaps, and I mm -hmm. felt like there weren't many places that I could go and say, hey, actually, I don't always love breastfeeding my baby, or... You know, I'm not having the easiest time with this. And I spent so much time thinking about the culmination of this perfect mom and who I should be. And it really took me about two years before I thought, I'm putting more energy into trying to be who I think I should be instead of living into being a mom and being in this season. So all of that to say, Postpartum Together was built out of what I felt was missing for myself and then... I set out to interview and talk to other moms and I heard that echoed over and over. Like there is no place to enter this transition and really hold space for the taboo topics and have these connections and really go deep. So that's what we do. We talk about all the transitions of postpartum, not just bouncing back, not just mental health, but we go into relationships and stress and identity shifts and our cultural understanding of postpartum so that women can kind of heal through their own process and be more empowered. That's the goal is for them to be more empowered by knowing who they are as moms. So Chelsea, how many kids do you have? 
I have two. I have a you three have year kids. old. Well, almost four, almost two. Oh, and how, so how are you guys handling? <laughs> I, I mean, it's such a dumb question. How does that oh, yeah. handle where the world we're in now? Um, I, I, I think probably for you, uh, me and like everybody else, every day is a little bit different. You sure. Know? Yeah. So, we okay. feel um, we had a really fortunate, well, it depends on how you look at it. My husband was laid off for 40 days somewhere in there. Um, but it was actually the most time we've ever got to spend together as a family longer than his paternity leave. So we actually really there, cherish a that. Part of this, there's a part yeah. of this that it's almost, a, you're almost afraid to say, you know, there's some really good stuff yeah. that have come out of this. And yeah. I'm happy. Am I supposed to be happy? Do I feel right. happy for being happy? You know, not right. It, it, there's, as with anything else. So you mentioned before uh, relationships and stuff, and maternal mental health in general has been a very taboo subject mm -hmm. up until very recently. You dive even deeper. You go into the, the intimate parts of it, the stuff yeah. that even not maternal mental health, a lot of us are a little uncomfortable talking about. Yeah. So how, how did you get to that? Like, was that where you were going to start from or <laughs> moved into there? And then how does your husband feel about this? Oh, right. Things to ask you. Right. Um, and Shannon, I think someone said you sound a little muffled just to check your speaker. Um, Probably my hair is in the way. Oh. I <laughs> so I don't know if anyone sets out to say, I want to publicly talk about sex and these other taboo topics. I really set out saying, what is missing from the conversation for women? And I started to talk about relationship, identity, body image, um, but intimacy came up over and over mm -hmm. again. And it was not too long ago, probably a, a couple of months ago that someone was like, hey, we do a podcast just on postpartum sex. And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, no, of mm -hmm. course not. I can't say <laughs> these words. And then I was like, yeah, I actually can. And the demand for that conversation has been so loud and so big. And just knowing that my audience is craving a place to say, like, this is weird. This is messy. I'm not going to bring it up at library story time. I'm not going to talk to my in-laws about it. Like, where right. do I go? What do I do? So, and, and before we continue, all you guys out there watching, if you hit that little um, deck with the little question mark on your screen you can ask some questions we'll ask Chelsea some questions so now you're you're into the intimate conversation yep. you're teaching people what it what do you do like what right. do you talk about because yeah. it is messy I I mean I remember yeah. after I had my first child my second child my third child whatever child it was I can't remember <laughs> um, <laughs> you you go to the doctor six weeks hit and they're like you're good to have sex and I'm like mm, really <laughs> mm -hmm. how many fingers do I have for you right now mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yes I mean that's a huge thing I've heard the stories of women over and over again who go to that appointment and they're like I don't know who I am like all this is changing am I doing this right and they feel like a lot of them, not always, but a lot of people say they feel like they leave with this, like, check, you can go have sex now, or like, you're ready for sex. And what does that even mean to be ready? I think it's so multifaceted. So I really like to take people through this journey of what does this mean mentally? What does this mean physically? What does this mean emotionally? Ready, right, the husband is in the car, ready, yeah, yeah is very multifaceted. Um, so based on the demand, I created something called the back in the sack guide, <laughs> which I is- I saw this, that. Yeah, my, my, favorite, my favorite download, but we go through some of the questions. Like what is mentally blocking you from that? Or is it physical? You know, there are so many things that play into our desire for sex, our experience of sex. And um, is it is it okay if we just kind of go into some of those? Sure. And I, I do have a question yes. um, that I want to ask um, privately. Someone asked, this, is it normal? I'm only 35 weeks pregnant, and I haven't had sex in weeks. My pelvic pain is too much to think about sex. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I 
I mean, I'm not coming from a doctor's perspective, <laughs> but if someone's asking, are other women saying this? Yes. Yeah. There's okay. a she's, lot, a she's, lot she's going not on alone. down there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so to have pelvic, you know, if you have a human sitting on your pelvis. So if things are shifting and changing and it's just not sounding comfortable and enjoyable, that is common. So what do you think, do you, do you offer suggestions on how to talk to your husband about this? Mm -hmm. Because that's, you know, it's, it's dicey. It's, it's uncomfortable. And then we always have guilt in general anyway, as mm. women and moms. So, yeah. yeah. So what do you say? So I recommend that people start with first, like, let's peel back and see what are the roadblocks? Is it is it physical pain? Like that has a specific address. Like we need to get to a pelvic floor PT. We need to figure out what's happening because you shouldn't still be peeing yourself. You shouldn't have to continue through painful sex. Your pelvic floor goes through a lot of changes mm -hmm. and it's, it's common in a lot of places, not necessarily the US, but to have physical therapy right after birth. And so we know that's going through really? a lot of changes. Yeah. So like, France, really? it's just part of your postpartum care. A lot of physical therapy. Yes, oh. pelvic floor PT is standard care in other countries. Wow, what a difference that must make. Right, and I mean, that's a confidence that, I mean, you know, again, that's a mental, Everything. emotional, physical, that's so intertangled. Mm -hmm. um, so if that's the case, that's worth discussing with your partner because they likely don't know hey, the implication mm -hmm. of a baby growing on my pelvis and going through birth, your partner's probably not thinking about that. So that is a conversation to enter if that's the case. And it's a time that takes some vulnerability to say this, maybe this used to work in our intimacy, but this isn't working for me right now, or this is uncomfortable, this is painful. So it takes, I think, recognizing and having this conversation that you're not going to enter sex right the same way, the same positions, the same everything that worked before, mm -hmm. it's going to take new communication to figure out what works. And that takes time, which right. is limited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that takes vulnerability, which can be difficult for new moms who are, again, carrying that guilt, carrying that body image, carrying the Our mental load. And are clear. Everything. And exhausted. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. We, ha we have some people here. The pelvic PT, I personally hadn't heard of before. Um, is that something that is, you mentioned overseas, that's just mm -hmm. part of uh, postpartum care, but is that something that makes a huge difference in recovery? I would think it would be. Right. Um, and is that something that you can ask your doctor? Mm -hmm. Like, I just need this. Is it just yes. you don't know to ask? Yes, 100%. Okay. I think this is something we run into in so many aspects of postpartum is there's not really someone in charge of our postpartum care. We have a six week checkup. Mm, that's something. Mm -hmm. But our primary care providers not necessarily checking in on us through postpartum. We have all these appointments in pregnancy. And we have one in postpartum. Yeah. So we don't know what we don't know. Mm -hmm. And so I have found that a lot of women I talk to, pelvic floor PT has been transformational for them because either your pelvic floor is muscle. So they, and I'm, again, I'm not a medical expert here. This is what mm -hmm. I've learned from my physical therapists and others, but you can tighten up from stress or you can loosen up. Mm -hmm. And both of those can have an impact on your sex, on incontinence, right. things like that. So my so husband heard me. So Pam this, is, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I, I, so for people who are saying, you know, I want to do a lot of these things, but now I'm afraid to go places. Mm -hmm. Understandably so. Mm -hmm. um, are there things like that involve strengthening that you can just do at home? Um, there, yes. So I think there are, but one thing for people to be really mindful of is a lot of things have taught us like, do your Kegels, do your Kegels. Mm -hmm. And that's not always best for us. So okay. I will use myself as an example. I carry stress in my hips, my shoulders, and I realized I carried it in my pelvic floor. So I would tighten up 
instead of loosen up, which was a painful sexual experience um, after my baby. So I had to learn how to release and relax my muscles and not to tighten them like a Kegel. So I think it's super important to find someone who's trained in that. There are virtual um, postpartum phys PTs right now that are, okay. you know, you can offer virtual care, which is different, but there are also um, trainers who are specifically trained for postnatal care who can teach you how to do both the strengthening and the releasing, which is what a lot of people are missing if they just hear like Kegel, Kegel, Kegel. Right. And so then let, let's, let's talk about body image because a couple of people yeah. have mentioned that. And that's, it's just a big one. So how do you, uh, when you work with the people you work with, how, what do you do regarding, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, our body's been through so much and now, yeah. you know, we got that going on. Yeah, yeah. And it's something we all continue to struggle with, I think, as women in general. But this is such a tender time. Um, the two things that I start with is one, learning about what your body has actually been through. I think when we give birth, sometimes we don't even know what all is happening in our body. We don't know how the hormones are reacting to breastfeeding or not breastfeeding. We don't know how the uterus has expanded and shrinks and how our body holds on to fat or doesn't. So taking time to learn those things I think can give us an appreciation and a little more understanding of our bodies. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing that I find just specifically with people um, my age as new moms is we are, we're online all the time, right? And we're right. taking in information all the time. And a lot of times we're, ex we're, we're comparing ourselves and we're judging right. ourselves and we're masking it as inspiration um, mm -hmm. inspiration is great, but inspiration walks a fine line. So if you leave someone's page, someone's information, their blog, their Instagram, whatever it is, and you're feeling bad about yourself, it's probably time to walk away from that and spend some more of that time, you know, thinking about what care looks like for you. So those are right. kind of the two action steps that don't take a lot of, um, that vulnerability and connection, but then it really is moving into that conversation with your partner, which is that vulnerable space. Mm -hmm. And what I have found in our groups, um, when we bring partners in, oftentimes the things that women are assuming their partner is saying or thinking about them, how hard they're being on themselves is not actually what the partner is thinking or is right. not their intention. We create our own stories. Yes, so we have to, yes. yes, yes, I think we, we live in our own story so often, mm -hmm. and we have to break out of that and have the conversation, not assume the conversation, build the resentment, build the insecurity around this fake conversation, Right. but have the damn conversation <laughs> with the partner. 100%. I mean, even as individuals, I, we all view things through our own lens anyway. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's very easy to feel defensive. And yeah. again, I'm going to go back, especially if you're exhausted, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and you're, you're maybe not moving as much as you should be or can mm -hmm. at this okay. point, you know, mm -hmm. to get the oxygen, oxygen in your brain and to get things feeling yeah. a little bit better. It's a difficult right. time. Right. So now this back in the sack. Class. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just love it. It's, and it's great. Um, is th this is like a webinar? This is a class? Mm -hmm. is so right now it exists as a free download. So it's like a seven minute video that goes with a little printable worksheet. And then it's going to be releasing in June as an e-course that people can do at any time by themselves, with their partners, whichever um, from their homes. So if you could give uh, women who are maybe um, in their third trimester or just had a baby some advice, a couple <laughs> things besides just yeah. stop t telling yourself stories that, you know, yes. aren't true. Yeah. So the first what would is, be, to what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. The first would be to have that partner know before the six week checkup that that six week checkup is not just about getting back to sex that night. Right. We're right. 
Very we simple, have... <laughs> but most of us don't ever say that. Right. So we have this limited understanding still of postpartum, and our partners have even less of an understanding. So they're thinking like, whoa, this is the night. And if we play into that, we're building resentment, we're going down this path, we're feeling all these ways. So right now, wherever you are, if you're thinking about having a baby, if you just had a baby, like, just look at your partner and remind them there's more to that. And a checkbox doesn't mean I'm ready. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, I think the, the second thing would be to be okay finding different things that work. So you're going to feel different. You're going to have different needs. You're going to have to see intimacy in different ways as you get used to this again. So mm -hmm. intimacy might look different. It might take different connection points. You might need different things to feel connected to your partner. So it's okay if it doesn't all look the same as it did or look is probably not the best word. Um, it doesn't all. Well, no, 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 that, that, that's a good <laughs> point because someone had just asked about what if you have the hormones where you really want to have sex, but things just aren't looking and acting and right. being the same. And is that something that you have found as well? Um, well, is that a concern for women, women? Yes. Yeah. And that again, comes down to finding different things and having that communication. I think the first few times you're getting back into intimacy after baby, it has to be this understanding. Like we don't have the same end goal maybe as we did the last time we did this, you know, but mm -hmm. our goal right now is to figure out how we work together again. And that might take a few times before we hit that, you know, climax end goal that we usually think about. Right. Or get, do it some different way. I mean, if intercourse yes. isn't part of it, that's what the vibrator right. was made for. Yeah. And bring them on, yes. right? Yes. I, mean, it, I yes. mean, there are many things that not you can do, but can help you feel better. And, and I had seen on your Instagram uh, page, and I'm probably going to get it wrong, but I think you had a, a sign that said, Mama deserves a good orgasm too. Am I right? Yeah. Yes. Did I get it right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was great. Yeah. Because what we're, we're, I mean, this conversation, and it's so important, it's, okay, what do we do about telling our husbands we're not ready? But then again, feeling that connection and not just giving, because damn, by the time you have a baby, you've really given a lot. Um, right. You know, taking care of yourself sexually is important. Yes. It's a stress relief, too. There's like, right. that is good for you to release some stress and tension it, and right. get good. Hormones going. The, right, the dopamine and all everything that happens in yeah. your brain, just like yeah. if you go out for a run. Yes. You know? and, yeah. and this plays into a new, a mom's ability and feeling the freedom to advocate for herself because mm -hmm. we are, we're, we're doing for everyone else. We're taking right. care of everyone else. And I hear so many women struggling with advocating for their needs in so many ways. And that comes to intimacy also. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, oh, there, I don't know if you can see that comment, yeah. um, but PMAD, you know, having right. some kind of, you know, the anxiety, the depression that comes with that. How do you navigate through something like that and mm -hmm. then think about sex? Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, that can be such a, such a stumbling block for us because we're dealing with those hormones and the PMADs and how we're, we're feeling. And so again, that might look different. It might mm -hmm. be intimacy in a different way. Um, it might be utilizing some kind of tool to help you right. get there because dang it, we don't have 40 minutes to warm up like right. research that <laughs> right. women right. need. So how do we accelerate that a little bit to get there and especially if a baby's sleeping and you're like oh you know gosh. baby's asleep let's go right right, you have to right. Yeah, so right you know what sometimes you have to kind of cut to the chase mm -hmm. in a different way and then i think the other thing is um the mental space mentally getting there when you're one when you're feeling depressed or anxious two you're taking care of the baby all day you're worn out you're exhausted you're not 
fantasizing or getting in the mood or, you know, swaying your hips through the day, you're like just surviving. Right. And um, so one thing that we've tried and I recommend for people that are dealing with this is like, maybe you schedule one day a week and that's the only day you have to focus on mentally getting there. That's the day mm -hmm. when you um, send cute texts to your husband or your partner, whoever that is. That's the day that you try to, you know, really focus on feeling good about yourself and maybe swaying your hips when you're on that ball or whatever, you know, on your right. exercise ball or whatever it is so that you're not feeling like, oh, every day I have to be ready if my partner's going to initiate sex. Like, maybe we put it on the calendar. One day I work hard on mentally getting there and then mm -hmm. the other days I don't have to worry about it. Not that it's a bother, you know, but to mentally no, but it can be. And, make and that when space. you're pregnant, when you're pregnant, you know, you're a lot of times the first trimester you're sick. The second trimester, I don't know about you, but I was super horny. <laughs> I, you know, that's, and normally that's what I think what happens, uh -huh. right? So you, hormonally, you're just like, okay. <laughs> and the third trimester, baby exhaustion. What a roller coaster ride women have go through. Um, so just being ready when someone else is ready, eh, yeah, you know, it might it, not it, work. It, and it then, might not work. Yeah, and I think when when you try maybe scheduling it for a season, one, you don't feel resentment because you feel like you're right. always supposed to be ready, and two, your partner doesn't feel rejection every night, which causes this emotional distance in itself. So you kind of take away the opportunity to fail. <laughs> well, and also then if it's not that night, but your partner is coming up and kissing and hugging, maybe you don't feel like, oh, they want something. Maybe you can just open yourself yeah. up to just that. Yes. As opposed to being like, yes. Well, what's right? this going to lead to? <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's, yeah, yeah. that's yep. great. Yep. That's great. And then one other thing that has worked for some of my clients and for myself is maybe it's not at night. Maybe it's in the morning. Maybe mm -hmm. if you and your partner are both home, it's at nap time or whatever, because we know it by, by nighttime, we're usually touched out and exhausted. So maybe right. you try a different time of day. It might change things a little bit. But you don't have to do it when you get home from the doctor in six weeks. No, hell no. <laughs> And, and I, I love the idea of just having that conversation beforehand yeah. without the guilt, just saying, hey, this is it. Maybe it will, but maybe it won't, you know. Yes. Yeah. I love that. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Well, you are really cool. Well, I like thanks. what, I mean, um, I think um, it, it's very important. It's, again, m mental health is is such a taboo subject, although I think we're getting so much better. And then mm -hmm. sex in general can be such a stressful situation mm -hmm. on top of already a very stressful situation. Yeah. So if you ladies out there, um, go to post postpartum together. Mm -hmm. All of Chelsea's classes are there and they're great. Mm -hmm. Please follow Chelsea on Instagram because she is just <laughs> entertaining as hell. And I'm going to sit, we'll, we'll post uh, the Instagram handle, but it's Chels Keeps It Real with some dots mm -hmm. in between, yep, right? Yep, yep. And um, I want to thank you for joining us. Oh, it was so fun. And for keeping it real. Yeah. You and know, I tried for two years to not, and it just wasn't working. So I was like, yeah, I, I think freedom. We all, I think we do that. I think we <laughs> yeah. do that because we tried to be what maybe our parents thought we were supposed to be or we thought other oh, people gosh. are supposed mm -hmm. to be. And, you know, once you're like, screw it, I, this is it. This is what you're getting. Uh, yep. it was a <laughs> sense of freedom and then growth. That's when growth yep. happens. Yeah. So yeah. thank you so much, Chelsea. Yes, thank you. It was so and fun God, to everybody, join in. Oh, everybody. I, you missed it, but you will be able to watch this on our YouTube channel, which is the same tag MWH Network. So you can go on YouTube and it should probably be up um, by tomorrow. And there are a few other ones if you miss them. But uh, we will be going on all week. And go follow Chelsea on Instagram and check out her uh, her URL, postpartumtogether.com. Right? Yeah, Dot com? perfect. All right, Thank you. 
Have right, fun. Good. Have good yeah. sex this week. If there you want we to. You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Chelsea. Bye. Okay, okay guys. Thanks for um, hanging with us. Like Chelsea said, have good sex this week. Even if you, I would say even if you don't want to. Unless you don't want to. And you can find this um, live along with many others f from uh, a couple uh, yes today and yesterday and then the week to come on our YouTube channel and we will talk to you soon. Thanks a lot.